Okay, guys, today we're going to talk about the conceptual overview of the head and neck, in which I will not go very deep. I will just talk about your assignment question answers. So, first of all, here we got the major compartments of the head. In the major compartments of the head, we got here the cranial cavity, two ears, two orbits, two nasal cavities, and an oral cavity. Again, cranial cavity, two ears, two orbits, two nasal cavities, and oral cavity. And the second part of this question is that which compartment is the largest? The cranial cavity is the largest compartment and contain the brain and associated membranes, what we call that meninges. So we got here the second question pterygopalatine fossa and infratemporal fossa the name is representing pterygopalatine pterygoid plate belong to the siphonoid bone and the palatine by itself is a bone so this fossa on each side is just posterior to the upper jaw the small fossa communicate with the cranial cavity infratemporal fossa with the orbit the nasal cavity and the oral cavity. The important structure is passing through that is the maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve that we can see here. Second is the infratemporal fossa. Infra mean below. Temporal is the region here. So below the temporal region, this area here, between the posterior aspect of the ramus of the mandible and the posterior to the upper jaw. This fossa is letting the mandibular nerve, which is also the branch of the trigeminal nerve, is passing through it. So, pterygopalatine important structure, maxillary nerve. Infratemporal fossa, important structure passing through, that is the mandibular nerve. Next question is about the compartments of the neck. If this is a transverse section of the neck and we can see the four compartments here first of all here we can see the yellow color is representing the visceral compartment it is having the visceral structures in it so it is known as visceral compartment the both side we got the vessels and the nerves in it so these two compartments known as vascular compartment and the back side in the posteriorly we are having here the vertebral and associated muscles in it so that is the over vertebral compartment so one visceral two vascular one vertebral so total four compartments in the neck what are sutures our skull bones except the mandible are interconnected by the immovable fiber joints they are known as the suture for example here we go the frontal and the parietal bone so between the frontal and the parietal we are having the coronal suture between the two parietal bones we got here the sagittal suture between the parietal and the occipital bone we got here lambdoid suture what are fontanelles and their importance during birth in the fetus and the newborn large membranous unossified gap between the skull bones are known as the fontanelles here we can see anterior and the posterior fontanelle and their importance during the birth is that they help the head to deform during the passage through the birth canal they also help the postnatal growth of the brain how many synovial joints are present in the head there are only three pairs of synovial joints on each side of the head. The largest one is between the temporal and the mandible. We call that temporal mandible joint. The other two very small synovial joints are between the three tiny bones in the middle ear. Malus, incus and step between them. What is the bony framework of the neck and their special characteristics? The seven cervical vertebrae form the bony framework of the neck. They are special characteristic. They have the small body, spinous process is the bifid, and the transfer process is having the foramenia. 
we got here the special characteristic of the cervical vertebra the small body transfer process is having the foramenia and the spinous process is the bifid what is the hyoid bone it is a small u-shaped bone oriented horizontal plane superior to the larynx where it can be palpated side to side uh, it could the body it formed two arms we call that greater horns it got the lesser horns very important thing about the hyoid bone it is not articulating directly with any other skeletal elements in the head or neck superiorly it attaches to the floor of the oral cavity inferiorly it is attaching to the larynx and posteriorly it attached to the pharynx skeletal muscles of the head and neck major groups so let's talk about let's talk about the muscles groups in the head include the extra ocular muscles they move the eyeball and open the upper eyelid muscles of the middle ear they adjust the movement of the middle ear bones muscles of facial expressions move the face muscles of mastication move the jaw especially temporal mandibular joint muscles of the soft palate elevate and depress the palate muscles of the tongue move and change the counter of the tongue now let's talk about the major group muscles in the neck they include muscles of the pharynx constrict and elevate the pharynx muscles of the larynx adjust the dimension of the airway strap muscles position the larynx and hyoid bone in the neck muscles of outer cervical collar move the head and upper limbs postural muscles in the muscular compartment of the neck position the neck and head clinical correlation at the vertebral level between the C3 and C4 and the C5 and the C6 between C3 and the C4 which is actually the upper margin of the thyroid cartilage it is actually the bifurcation point of the common carotid artery common carotid artery is going to divide at this level into the internal and the external carotid artery internal carotid artery is not giving any branch in the neck and it is directly going into the cranial cavity to give the supply to the brain and also it supplies to the eye and the orbit rest of the neck face and the head structures are actually supplied by the branches of the external carotid artery between the C5 and the C6 which marks the lower limit of the pharynx and the larynx and the superior limit of the trachea and the esophagus tracheostomy tracheo the word coming from the trachea and stomy is the artificial opening so tracheostomy is a procedure in which we perform the artificial opening in the trachea for the airway when we perform this procedure when the upper airway is blocked how many cranial nerves and which one is the longest actually there are 12 cranial nerves and the vagus nerve which is number 10 is the longest cranial nerve cervical plexus formed by the union of which nerve cervical plexus is formed by the union of anterior rami of the c1 c2 c3 and c4 newborn babies can suckle and breathe at the same time what is the reason in the newborn babies the larynx is higher in the neck and the epiglottis is above the soft palate so as a result they can eat and breathe at the same time it remain like this one year after the birth
we got here the anterior triangle boundary, the median vertical line in the neck, inferior margin of the mandible, anterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle is making the boundary of the anterior triangle of the neck. Posterior triangle of the neck. Here we go the boundary of the posterior triangle of the neck which is highlighted here as blue color. So we got here the middle one-third of the clavicle, posterior margin of the sternocleidomastoid muscle and the anterior margin of the trapezius muscle. Okay, thank you.